How you doing, guys? Forgive the audio today. We're back in the studio. Um, and forgive the mess, as always. My wife's decorating for Christmas, and uh, I need to help her out. And there's a bunch of Christmas boxes and stuff between the camera and me. Um, anyway, we're back in the studio finally. I've been wanting to get back down here to shoot, but it's going to be a little bit noisy today. My heat keeps turning on and off. We had snow yesterday. Two days ago, we filmed for the season finale of season two of The Simplest Things, which I'm going to be, right after this, putting up on um, Amazon Prime for you guys. Uh, season one's up there now. But today we're going to talk about my little light kit. Okay, this is my smaller light kit. It's my least expensive one, one you can get at a hardware store. You don't need anything special for it, but the lights that were in here, we used one plus regular house lighting to film all of X24, the 22 minute uh, short, science fiction short that we're going to be hopefully sending out to film festivals in 2018 and then getting online for you guys to watch. Um, and I thought it was pretty effective. It's it's mostly key lighting stuff. You're going to need other sources of light unless you only want small spaces and shadowy light. Although they are floodlights, they're not directional, and that's another part of this. There is one directional light in here that was probably the most expensive light in here. I'm going to start with, this is a light stand. Um, this is an impact stand. This one, I believe, came with a kit I bought. I'm, I'm Actually, I've had them mixed up now so much, I don't know. Um, but during a shoot... Many, many years ago, I stepped on the light stands for my Smith Victor set um, and cracked one of these plastic edges here and had to replace one. I was replacing two. I found these on eBay way back when, um, starting with bids for $1.25, back when Impact was trying to make a name for themselves, I guess. And uh, I got most of them for like under $5. But get yourself some good light stands. They're going to cost a little bit of money, uh, but they're very helpful to have. However... This particular light kit doesn't really require them. Okay, now, this cool case right here, I believe I paid about $10 for in a thrift store. Thrift stores are great places to get bags and cases to cobble together toolkits. Okay, this is a box. There's an empty space here where uh, one of my clamp lights used to be. Right now, that's what's lighting us. And I'm going to cut away to that in a minute to show you why you don't actually need light stands if you can't afford them yet. So. What you're looking at there, that is a clamp light. It's got the stronger clamp on it. Um, and it's on top of a PVC pipe that's leaning against my wall. I used that the other day to light our spaceship, which is right there, you can see. Um, and that PVC pipe is the leftover pipe from the dummies we worked on about six or eight videos ago. So you can see, you can clamp these things to almost anything. You could actually probably make a pretty decent light stand with a... Uh, I've seen guys use the PVC pipes in like a big bucket and they put cement in it. To me, that seems like it's going to be a lot heavier than just getting a light stand and not a whole lot cheaper. But it's, it's something to try. Um, you know, it's, in, in a pinch, it'll definitely work. And for shooting outside, you can even use wooden stakes and stuff and clamp the light to those. Um, but what the, the main thing I'm trying to say is you can clamp these things to almost anything and get them in the direction you need them to go. This is a triple tap extension cord. This is very useful if you're going to use multiple clamp lights on a light stand. Because um, they don't have very long cords and you want to be able to plug in this and then plug them all into that. This is a filter. You do not want to use these in direct contact with this. I'll show you what this is. So this is a, this is a clamp light. This is a 100 watt clamp light. It's been a little crushed. That they've been through a lot. They're great uh, since they're so inexpensive. They're like $8 for fairly decent one. They make ones with better clamps than this. You want the tougher clamp. That's the one that's actually in use right now. Um, but what's neat about this, okay, so we have a table here. You can clamp this to the table if you're not afraid of marring it. It does have rubber on the clamp, but you always want to be careful not to clamp it to someone's expensive furniture, right? But so you can clamp this to a table. You can clamp it to a leg on a tripod. You can clamp it to an actual, like, pick up a $5 tripod somewhere, extend the neck all the way, clamp it there. You can clamp this to almost anything. Now, it will not always hold. You want one with a better clamp for better hold. Um, I've also found that to give these a better grip, you take a second clamp. You clamp this to what you want to clamp it to. You need a bigger one than this. And then you clamp that side closed, and now you've got a better grip. Oh, um, So this is 100 watt. They also have 300 watt ones. Um, 100 watts now are probably plenty. The, the reason it's 100 watt is this plastic will not handle more heat than that. But since that's a, a matter of the, the heat of the, the bulb, not the actual amount of light going out, 
Um, you can use, you know, a 100 watt rated bulb and it's going to put even less heat through here if it's an LED or a CFL. So go ahead and get yourself, if you can find a 150 watt LED that will fit in here and it's only rated at like 25 watts of usage, it will probably work okay. Now, um, on a light stand and with that triple tap, say you're using regular, these little 100 watt incandescent bulbs that you can still find at the dollar store, two for a dollar. They use a lot of power, they do generate heat, but um, they're inexpensive, 50 cents a piece, right? But so now you want to get 200 watts because you're using these clamp lights and you don't have a pro light set, but you need you, high, but you need the extra wattage. So what you're going to do is you, I've got this little PVC rig that I made. Okay, it's just a T-top and I used a thicker um, pipe than I needed. It was, I guess, on sale at the time, right? This will fit over the neck of your light stand. I have to extend it a bit. All right? Fits over that. Then you clamp a light here, clamp a light here, use your triple tap to plug them into, and now you have 200 watts of light on the top of your light stand for about 16 bucks. Um, and I think you can actually get three on there if you really try. Uh, so I usually have two of these lights in here. And then this, I believe I picked up at a music store. I got two of these on sale, and as you can see, there's a way to, to make these clamps and things. I usually wind up using them on the ground, though. This is a um, spotlight. So this will throw a very focused beam of light right in the direction. They're great if you're using a fog machine just to kind of get some different color out there. They're also neat if you need to light just one character but keep everything else shadowed. Um, just watch because you'll, you'll wind up seeing the spot up top if you're shooting low-angle stuff. But if you shoot it past people, it works pretty well. It'll lay a pretty harsh light across them, but it'll it'll keep it where you want it to be. All right. So that's the two main things in this kit: is my spotlight and my clamp lights. I used to also have I have two clamp light, two spotlights in here. The other one's back, as this one should be. I used to also have um, something else in here. Oh, I do have this, which is a battery-operated light. Um, just try to take the batteries out of makes a nice eye light if you can get it close enough to your character. These were old fluorescent lights you used to be able to buy everywhere. Um, they're not that easy to find anymore because there's so many LED versions of it. But if you can get the LED versions of these battery operated lights, these are neat to have. We used to use this one a lot in um, car shots. And we would set this up as if it was the dashboard light in the character's face, but it was much brighter than the dashboard, so it worked well. I'm going to leave that out of the kit for now because I need to uh, get those old batteries out. I've actually got two of those in here. I have a lighter adapter for something. These were a tricky thing I tried at one time. Uh, they're report covers, but they're colored. So when you put them in front of a light, they kind of gel it. But they don't gel. It. You, can, you can't put them right in front of the light again because they're not heat treated, so they'll melt. So what I did... I'm not suggesting this. Always try it outside, make sure it's not going to heat up too much. But what I wound up doing was I took a wire hanger, put it through this nifty convenient hole in the clamp light, um, tried one that was toward the top, put it out, made a hoop. You can even just use like the, the thick picture wire. Make a hoop a few, at least six, eight inches in front of the clamp light. So that when you have the bulb in here, and again, this is a good time to use an LED low heat bulb instead of, you know, the 100 watt, actual 100 watt incandescent that's going to heat up. Um, but so that when you have a bulb in here, it's not going to touch or be close enough. There's going to be air cooling it between it and this colored plastic stuff. Um, if you are going to gel your lights that way, which again, I don't suggest it's not the safest way to do it. Get proper heat treated gels if you can. But if you gel your lights with any kind of colored plastic, instead of doing it in post now, like I showed you in another video, what you're going to want to do is white balance before you put the gel on. If you put the gel on the light and then white balance, a lot of cameras are good enough now that they will um, balance your, your color gel right out of the picture. And so you'll wind up with just a kind of clean white light again, even though you worked really hard to get blue and green and red. If you do a lot of colors, they'll probably leave that in. But if you try and just do one color, it'll take it right out again, and you'll be very disappointed. Um, so, real quick, you want to keep an eye out for cases that are going to work well, for sales on light stands, 
for clamp lights with the good clamps if you can find them. The other nice thing about these is you can run to a, a hardware store and grab one of these, grab one or two of the, the lights on the way to a shoot. Um, get a bunch of LED bulbs, get a bunch of regular incandescent bulbs, and just go. You know, so you can find out you have a shoot, you can find out one of your lights doesn't work and go into you can the ones with the cheap clamps you could get at Walmart. Um, and I only mention them because they're open 24 hours, and sometimes that's that's when things go wrong, right? So you lose a 500 watt floodlight, you go buy three of these, you're halfway there. Um, so keep an eye out for cases or bags that you can use. Duffel bags work pretty well if you don't need hard side. Um, I usually reinforce them with cardboard. Keep an eye out for good deals on bulbs. Get yourself a few clamp lights. Make sure you have them around just for... They're a really inexpensive way to get a third or fourth or fifth light in a place where you need that little bit of extra light or a whole bunch of extra light. Um, keep, them, keep some towels with you if you're going to use them in someone else's house. This way if you clamp to the back of a chair, you can put a towel there and protect it. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's my cheapy light kit. Um, also look out if you hear your yard sales and see those can lights, the, the spotlights. You might want to get yourself a set of those. They're, they're kind of interesting to have. Battery operated lights are good to have in your kit. Oh, and I already closed the case up, but I do have a multiplier in here. There's always have you know your basic pocket knife tool set with you. Something with a screwdriver and a pliers and something. I keep them in all my light kits. I usually keep extension cords, at least one, in all my light kits. I have the, the triple tap in here. I usually have a, um, I don't know where it ran off to on this shoot, uh, a uh, multi-strip in, in all my light kits. So anything that uses power, have those basic things with you, an extension cord, a multi-strip, um, some battery-operated lights, and a little tool kit. Uh, so the next time I can tell you how you can expand on this even more, and that's it for today. And then we're going to go into my, um, my power box, which is basically all the things that, that power me on shoots and, and the, the fact that like I could be 400, watt, 400 feet away from uh, my nearest power source and not be worried. All right, guys, I hope that's still recording because I've been talking a long time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.